Today on the HealthWorks Here podcast, we're going to hear from Diane. Diane suffered from numerous health conditions, including reflux, hives, and asthma. Then Diane met Dr. Laura Doyen at Emerson Health, and her life was changed thanks to weight loss surgery. Today, we're going to hear Diane's heartbreaking and inspirational story. This is the HealthWorks Here podcast from Emerson Health. I'm Scott Webb. So I want to thank you both for joining me. Uh, Dr. Doyen, we've spoken before, and Diane, you were Dr. Doyen's patient, and we were just kind of talking about something that just happened to you recently and how that was only really possible because of what Dr. Doyen has done for you. So we've done it like this before, where we kind of hand the keys to the doctor and let them sort of drive. So I'm going to do that, Dr. Doyen, and I'm going to hand it over to you and let you speak with Diane. Hi, Dan. It's great to talk to you. I'm thrilled to hear how you're doing nearly a year after our surgery. So um, very much looking forward to that. I think we should start by, I think everybody needs to hear your story because you were first sent to me to help manage reflux and a hiatal hernia, but there is a lot more to your story, which makes you so interesting and makes you just for me such a gratifying experience of helping you. So do you want to tell us a a little bit about your story of, you know, how did you come to find me? Okay. Actually, it started about 10 years ago that I had heartburn, and then that advanced to the acid reflux. And then a few years afterwards, I was building a cabinet with Steve, and I broke out in hives. Then I ended up in intensive care for quite some time, and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. So they decided that I had chronic hives and these hives would attack my throat so I couldn't breathe. And they were able to keep the hives under control through medications, but they never fully went away. Afterwards, It just started, as the doctor said, it was like my hives were on steroids. So they started to give me Zolair injections. But the pain in my chest was worsening, and my breath was being taken away more often, and my acid reflux was totally out of control. So my doctor suggested another upper GI, and when he saw this, he saw a high hanal hernia, and he suggested Dr. Doyen. I said, Dr. Doyen? I said, she's a weight loss doctor. <laughs> so that is how I came to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And many gastroenterologists will send me patients who are suffering from terrible reflux that seems to be driven by a hiatal hernia. And so I do surgery to repair the hernia and prevent reflux from happening in the esophagus. In your situation, your weight was also a factor in this because we had a BMI over 35. And that's an inflection point for me and other surgeons who do this type of procedure to prevent reflux with a hernia, where instead of doing something called a fundoplication, instead I spoke to you about doing gastric bypass as the anti-reflux portion of the surgery alongside the hiatal hernia repair. Sometimes you will find this advice sort of unexpected. Do you want to share for us how did you take that advice or what was your thought when I presented this plan to you? Like I said, it's like a weight loss person and I just said, okay. And I even remember asking you if I lost the weight you know, would you do still do the surgery? And I'm so glad you were the doctor and not me (laughs) because where I am now, I just can't believe the way that my life has changed. So I was a little stunned about the weight loss. But after I went through the process at your office and I understood and I was not so afraid What you need to understand, it wasn't so much the weight loss surgery. It was I was afraid I was going to die because the hives were so bad. And my last words to the anesthesiologist is don't forget about the hives. And he assured me that 
I'm sorry. That's okay. That it was going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have a really expert team of anesthesiologists that I trust completely. I work with them daily. I'm so glad that they were able to help get you through the surgery and help reassure you at that scary time when you're in that waiting area before surgery. It's a time that most people anticipate quite a bit. But we got you through surgery. Yeah, and also, too, your staff was just really there for me. You know, with all of my ups questions yeah. and stuff, because I had so many. Yeah, yeah. The staff loves what they do, and I can tell how gratifying they find the process of watching people go through surgery is because they are invested, they're genuine, they want to take the time. So I'm really glad that you got that experience too, because you deserve that. Thank you. So tell the listeners. What was it that we were so surprised about? Your reflux, as I predicted, improved after hiatal hernia repair and gastric bypass. But what else improved? Why is your story so remarkable? All right. Take your time. So for many years that I did not live life, I couldn't go outside because I couldn't handle the weather, whether it be hot or cold. I had the acid reflux at night, so I never slept through the night. Then all of a sudden this asthma appeared from wherever. Um, And then all of the medications that I was on, it was like I was fighting the fatigue all day long. I was constantly tired and so then I started drinking a lot of Diet Coke and then I was on a roller coaster Mm -hmm. crazy and then the problems eating at the end of it was just awful I mean I would even drink something and bend over and it would come back up yeah then I couldn't exert myself because I couldn't exercise or even do like housework and the worst thing about it is I dreaded taking a shower because the hives would get so bad. So that is my life, you know, was like before the surgery. It's almost like your body was on this runaway spiral where each problem seemed to aggravate the others. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And so it was like I basically lived in my house for years because I was not even able Mm -hmm. to walk from the car to a store. I was always dropped off at the beginning of the store, at the entrance of the store. I mean, we would have Mm -hmm. family gatherings, picnic gatherings, and I would be in the house and everybody would have to come in and visit me. And even people hugging me or anything, I just didn't even want to be touched because of the hives. Yeah, so afraid of the hives jumping up. Yeah, yeah. Must have but been I do remember your words that I just sat there and I told you all of these symptoms and you said that you had other patients and that you have seen these decrease with all the asthma and everything. Absolutely. I think that one of the less described and maybe underappreciated effects of gastric bypass is that not only does it really help reflux, but for people suffering from what I'll describe as inflammatory side effect of weight, it seems that weight has an inflammatory effect on the body. Things like asthma, hives, unexplained allergic phenomenon, can get better. And I was banking on that with your story of reflux and out of control adult onset asthma plus the hives, my suspicion was that everything would get better with the hiatal hernia repair and the gastric bypass anatomy. Yes, and it did because I'm on no medicine. That's incredible. Can you tell people how much medication were you taking when we met? There was about 12 of them, at least a day. Isn't that something to celebrate, maybe? (laughs) Oh, yeah, because it's like, it's totally out. And I still say, you know, like, oh, I have to go and take my meds. And I actually need my vitamins. (laughs) 
Well, we heard about how your life was limited in terms of how you could participate in life and enjoy life before surgery. So what types of experience have you had since surgery? Oh, my. It's still happening after a year. Even yesterday, I held a puppy for the first time. Wow. So that was, oh, my gosh, just the smell. But the first thing I did, but you have to remember, I know I sound like I'm a little crazy, but I'm really not. No, never. But um, my first test to myself, I went with a very good friend of mine, tulip picking. I remember. And I remember walking up the hill, and I was just waiting for my breath just to be taken away. And it never happened. And I said, okay. And I even remembered, I even had two different kinds of coats on just in case something happened. (laughs) So (laughs) then she says, Diane, you're supposed to be picking the tulips. It's like, I know, but I was afraid to bend down because the acid reflex. Right. And it was really weird because when you pick tulips, you actually have to bend down and really pull on them to get the bulb out. Right, right. So I'm sitting there going, okay, if that doesn't happen, I know it's going to be a hive breakout. Hmm. And nothing happened. (laughs) Absolutely nothing happened. I looked at my bunch of flowers, and I never saw anything so beautiful in my life. Wow. So because of that, I went out and I planted... Oh, by the way, I was not even gardening at all. So I planted 70 bulbs of tulips to mark this. Wow. What a perfect way to memorialize your success. I mean, the visual is just incredible. I love that. And then the next thing I did, which I didn't want to do, but Steve just insisted, and it was for a few weekends, but I finally went to the beach. And I was so scared. And he goes, no, he goes, if anything happens, we can go. Because he's been through a lot of it with me. Mm -hmm. So he knew. But the first time, I went very early in the morning, 9 o'clock, when most people weren't even there. And I left when people were coming. Because it wasn't the hive breakout or the asthma or anything. It was the sun was so strong for my skin. Yeah. So we left, and I returned, I really believe it was the next weekend, because I was so excited to feel the sand in my toes, that I went with an umbrella. And all day long, I just went in and out of the umbrella and reading, and I felt Mm -hmm. normal. I actually went in the water, Mm -hmm. and it was just amazing. And after that, we even went and we walked the shops. And this is something I have never been able to do. And also, too, I look forward to showers now. I just want everybody to know that. (laughs) How about one other little anecdote that I remember you telling me in the office? What about the wedding that you went to with Steve? Steve and I would always go to weddings, of course, together. Sounds dumb now that I say that. But we would go to weddings, and we would never be able to dance together. Because of the hives, I mean, whether it be slow or fast, even the slow ones. But the last wedding we went to, we actually danced slow and fast. So every aspect of my life, it's like a new day every day. Because my son got a puppy and I actually got to hold the puppy. My daughter is pregnant, and I get to go for walks with her. And now I really look forward to the baby because I will actually be able to hold the baby. I mean, it's hard to even put words to just how wonderful and gratifying this is. And there's no crying in surgery, but I'm trying, I'm working really hard to not get choked up. Diane, your experience has been amazing. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. I mean, before it was like I used to think about a baby and, you know, that I would not be able to take the baby anywhere. Mm-hmm. To the zoo, wow. to parks, to even enjoy 
the life of being a grandmother. And now I have all these things and I have to remember that it's my daughter's baby and not mine. <laughs> that I could do just so many things, but I'm sure she'll, you know, let me go with her. But there's just so many things to oh. experience. That's what grandparents are for. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. I mean, I think for me, your story really illustrates how gratifying it can be to be in the position of being the surgeon, listening to the number of things, you know, the individual assortment of things that somebody is coming in with and trying to select the best possible plan and the best possible surgery so that if I can treat more than one condition at the same time with one, you know, elegant procedure, then why not go forward with that plan and make things as good as possible for you after surgery? And I just feel like you exemplify that. So thank you for trusting me. <laughs> you changed my life. I mean, this was life changing. And also, I just want the doctors and people to know out there, I met a young woman recently and she had the surgery, and I asked her about hives, and she said she didn't have any eyes. I said, what about asthma? She goes, that's so funny. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> because it was around Christmas time, and she had the asthma like I did. It gets really, really bad seasonal. Mm -hmm. You know, at certain times of the year, it gets really right. out of control. Come to think of it, she goes, I didn't have asthma. <laughs> So I think there's a lot more that might be researched. Is there any research on this? Yeah, so there's actually a good amount of research showing that what we think of as weight loss surgery is also treating some of the inflammatory effect of obesity, of excess weight. There's a number of studies showing that people who suffer from obesity have higher levels of inflammatory markers in their bloodstream. And those inflammatory markers are likely responsible for things like asthma, your hives, and interestingly, also probably have a role in causing people to develop cancer or heart disease. And there's data showing that people who suffer from weight have a higher risk of developing heart disease and cancer, and that risk can be mitigated or reduced by having weight loss surgery. So the answer is yes, there's data showing this. I don't think that it's something at the top of people's minds when they're thinking about weight management, but there's definitely strong literature to support these things. So I'm just thrilled that you were able to experience it in your own body. I always say that I didn't suffer like I did for no reason. Right. I want people to know that there is help, you know? Absolutely. And that is my main reason for doing this podcast is that people will know. Absolutely. So. I thank you for helping to get the word out. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Well, Diane, it's so great to hear your inspirational story and what you've been through and really hope that it inspires listeners to realize that there is help available, Dr. Doyen and others there at Emerson Health. And Dr. Wall, I've got you on the line. I want to maybe just ask some sort of, you know, baseline questions a little bit. Like what's the relationship with bariatric surgery and conditions like reflux, hives, asthma, because this has been so educational today. Maybe you can Sort of take us through that, the relationship as far as you understand, and also, you know, how does surgery help with these issues? Why does it help with these issues? I have seen many patients, similar to Diane's story, who present to me with, say, a hiatal hernia and terrible reflux, but they happen to have excess weight. And so their starting BMI might be over 35 or over 40, for example. And there is strong data to support changing how the anti-reflux part of the hiatal hernia repair works. So instead of doing a hiatal hernia repair plus something called a funduplication, which is a wrapping of the upper stomach around the lower esophagus to help block acid, for a person who has a higher weight, again, that BMI of 35 is sort of the cutoff, instead we recommend treating the reflux with a gastric bypass. 
because it seems that this is a longer lasting procedure for a person at a higher weight category. And I can talk more about why that is. Um, and I usually explain some of the dynamics of this with some hand-drawn pictures during the office visit. And so by performing a gastric bypass, instead of fundoplication, I end up pulling acid away from the stomach and esophagus with the drainage effect of a bypass. I also typically lower the weight of the person, which helps prevent less squeeze on the stomach and less push of acid back up into the esophagus. And over time, the gastric bypass is more durable for a person who has excess weight than a fundoplication might be, which can tend to fail over time if it's done in a person who has very high weight. So those are some of the reasons why this field of surgery recommends gastric bypass for people who have a BMI over 35. In Diane's situation, it had added benefit of treating some of the inflammatory effects of weight. She described this runaway train type experience of having reflux compounded by new onset asthma, compounded by hives, requiring a number of medications that affected how she felt, not being able to get adequate sleep, not getting the ability to exercise during the day, and this in turn affected her weight. So it was this sort of never ending cycle. And so surgery was able to reverse that cycle that her body was sort of set on. And it does that by controlling the reflux, as I mentioned. It also does that by affecting the inflammatory pathways in the body. So obesity tends to create a pro-inflammatory state in the body. And this has been well-researched. And a number of studies have shown that Inflammatory markers in the bloodstream are elevated in persons who suffer from obesity, and these inflammatory markers are probably some of the things that prod chronic disease to continue, such as heart disease, asthma, certain types of cancer. And so by performing a weight loss procedure, when there's less weight, this also affects the inflammatory condition, so there's less inflammation which is what helps correct those conditions. Well, Dr. Doyen, this has been really fascinating today. Educational, inspirational, everything I look for in a podcast, whether I'm hosting or listening, and I'm sure listeners agree. So as we close up shop here today, if someone's suffering from one or many of these conditions, why do you recommend that they come see you? Well, my approach is that I explain to the patient, you know, first of all, I listen to everything they're experiencing, and I try and do a really good job of getting a history of what they're dealing with and what's important to them and what their goals are so that I can best identify how I can help them. And then based on that information, I'll suggest, you know, a plan A versus a plan B surgery, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each. And this helps them get information from somebody who's an expert in what surgical procedures could offer. It's never kind of pressured commitment. This is informational. And if it sounds like it's something that they're interested in and feels like that this may help them with what they're currently struggling with, then we go forward with some testing and some planning to get them prepared for surgery. Yeah, well, it's awesome, and it certainly sounds like patients are in good hands at Emerson Health. So, Doctor, great to have you on again, and I'm sure that we'll speak again. Maybe we'll do more of these patient testimonials, but in the meantime, thanks so much. You stay well. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. And visit emersonhealth.org slash SWL or call Emerson Center for Weight Loss at 978-287-3532 for more information. And thanks for listening to Emerson's HealthWorks Here podcast. I'm Scott Webb, and make sure to catch the next episode by subscribing to the HealthWorks Here podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever podcasts can be heard.